You want to get a pair of FPV goggles, you've heard Sky Zones are the bee's knees, but uh, you don't know what to get, O2Cs, O2Ss, O2Xs, O3Os, well, stay tuned, because this video is going to be for you. Stu from UAV Futures here and today well we're going to be looking at some Sky Zone. Sky Zone has been absolutely killing it in the FPV goggle market lately and they're becoming more and more popular every day. The Sky Zone O2X is my gobble, go gobble, my goggle of choice. I absolutely love this thing when I'm flying analog. This is the one I'm taking around with me and I'm getting a lot of comments asking Stuart, I'm finding it difficult to tell the difference between the O3Os, the O3Ss, the O2Xs. There's just kind of a lot that look, uh, look it sounds similar. They even look similar on the bench so I can understand why people are getting confused. I'm going to put a little Sky Zone playlist up here where we break it down, we look at each individual model, but one you're not going to find in there is this video because today we're going to be talking about the O3S. Now essentially in this video we're going to break it down a little bit, talk about some of its features, all that sort of stuff, should you get it, and most importantly the differences between the other two types of goggles we've got right here, the O2s and the, o, and the OLEDs, and then the big one we go out of the field, we fly it around and we find out what's the right goggle for you because the price is going to be drastically different different. These ones are, you know, from cheapest to most expensive. We'll talk about the similarities, the differences, and why this goggle, the O3S, is in a bit of a tricky spot between budget and performance, because uh, what you can get, it's just um, it's just an interesting place. I'm not too sure where this one fits in the market for people out there. I'm sure it's going to be for some, but let's do it. Kick it off and find out how the O3S's actually go. So the first things first, they have the same functionality as all the other Sky Zones. Super quick to cycle through the menu. They don't take a receiver module. It's got their receiver built in actually but it is so quick to cycle through records dvr it's got a ton of different like inputs and outputs all that sort of stuff usbs hdmis you've got your ipds up here and i must say they've been fitting my face really well regardless of which one of these i've been using not very much light leakage whatsoever one difference is you can see we actually have the uh, power barrel on the bottom underneath here whereas on the o2s it's on the side a big one for a lot of people this goggle it does come with two face plates which i absolutely love i don't know if there are uh, in some of those in those boxes that must be over there somewhere in the rest of the studio but that was something I loved about the O3 versions. You got two face plates, so if you had a skinny face or a wide face, you can actually mix and match and put that on there with the two different foams you get to give you the perfect fit when you're snugging it up to your face so you're not gonna be getting any light leakage. If we talk about the screens, and that's really where the main differences come in between these three goggles, because the functionality is very, very similar. I mean, they've got front cameras. They look very nice and pretty stylish. It does have an LED bar on the front as well, but look, that's neither here nor there. I don't really find myself using that too much, but the big one about these screens is they almost look identical when you put them this way, but uh, the OLEDs have a huge resolution screen. They're going to be more expensive as well. I think they're like 1024 um, by 700, maybe something like that. So, But they're much more expensive. I think they're like the 420 buck mark. This pair right here, the O3Ss, and this is what makes it tricky because it's in a kind of a tough price comparison. I thought they were $320, and I could have sweared, I swore, sw sworn, sworn I've seen them at that price before, but uh, they have an, a normal uh, LCD screen in here that is only 800 by 600, and then uh, it's and that's also in four by three, and then, and then on the other end, uh, we have the ones that I use, and they're a 16 by nine screen on the O2Xs, and they've got the front camera, all that sort of stuff. So I think they're like the 260, buck mark or something they're a very very popular goggle for the price especially when you consider the only difference between this one is really a little bit bigger field of view and uh the four by threes now of course it's got some little upgrades like uh you know a larger strap that goes on the back it's got a heavy duty fan the led bar all that sort of stuff but it is very very similar to the other goggles out there so if you want to get a pair of goggles and you're looking at this and you're thinking which one they're kind of your three options your cheap sky zones middle of the range your top of the range these two are very very similar in terms of what it's going to be like and all the functionality the only difference between all these really is the screens do you want high res oleds get the o3o's do you want uh still the 4x3 and a big field of view but a little bit cheaper than the oleds well if you shop around anyway uh that's where the o3s's come in or do you just want to spend i guess what i think is the best value pair of goggles on the market and get a version of the o2s they come in a range of colors as well i have no idea why mine are all red even though i do think red is one of the best looking colors that they make but yeah, also 16x9 they're the ones that i use but that's 
that's it on the bench, I guess. The important part, let's go out to the field. We're going to fly them around. All the pilots, I think we're catching up with Grumpy Trev, Long Range Tony. They've flown all of them, whether it be the beginner sky, the cheaper sky zones, or the top of the line OLEDs. We've flown them all, and uh, finally we get their impressions on what they think about the O3Ss, and they compare it to their goggles and find out how it goes. And I should say, as a little side note too, I told them it costs 320 bucks, but if you look around on the links, the price of the O3Ss can fluctuate wildly. I've seen some where they're just as expensive as the O3Os, and some where they're about 100 bucks cheaper. So uh, keep that in mind. I told those boys that it's 330, but your mileage may vary depending on where you get them from. But let's do it. Let's go out of the field, have some fun with the O3Os and see what the uh, O3Ss, I should say, it's confusing me. We're going out in the field with the O3Ss and see what the other boys think. Let's do it in three, two, one. Radio out here in the field with the boys, the original. That's why he's looking so old now because he's been around for a long time. The original, we got Grumpy Trev. Long range Tony, let's do it with the Sky Zones O3Ss and just so we can have a comparison as well, we've been flying around all day with the O3Os. So we're going to be able to now put on the S's which are like the downgraded version or ones without the OLED screens. See if we can tell the difference, see what it's like, if it's worth the price, all that sort of stuff. Rip around and have some fun. So let's do it and uh, get our impressions. Do you like my um, battery Trevor? Just <laughs> Perfect. Perfect for your pocket. Yeah, just well, fits. the biggest thing that you've oh. had in your pocket for a while, Stu. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to comment there. I was organised. It's a pleasure working with such a professional, Trevor. Well, you know what? It would be work, but I don't actually pay you It would you be suckers. work, but he doesn't pay us. That's right. All right. Tony laid on me, brother. Where? Where's my um, Where are you? radio? Right, there you go. Hold, hold that. The uh, switch is in the middle. In the middle switch, middle switch for arming. Radio. I'm not noticing any light leakage. Comfortable on the face. I do have the band a little bit tight, I must say. So, I, and I'm going to turn the fan on because it is a warm day. All right. What do you think of the colour, Trevor? Yeah, it matches your complexion. <laughs> All right. Let's do this one. I do think the OLED screens in the other one look nicer. This oh, gee, you got a bit of jello in here, Tony. Yeah, the frame's broken in five places. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll just cruise because we're not talking about the drone quite so much, but getting perfect reception just flying around all these trees. Let's see if I can go around behind us. If I lose the drone, what happens? You give me a new one. Okay, done. Um, look, I'm going to say the colors are nice. I do think the other one, the OLEDs, are more vibrant. Those first sky zones were absolutely beautiful the O3Os, but if you had a pair of these, I don't think you'd be complaining in the slightest, as good as any Fat Sharks or uh, some of the other ones out there. What I don't like, and a lot of people will disagree with me here, is the 4x3 screen. I know a lot of people love 4x3. For me, oh, oh, got a bit of break up there. For me, I'm all about 16x9. That's where it's at. That's what I'm used to, and I think 4x3 might be a little bit of a relic. Man, what drone is this? Is this the Mobula? It is. God, it feels like it's a it's had its time hasn't it it's My been beaten has. around it's wobbling all over the place but as the goggles themselves uh sky zone functionality i would say 10 out of 10 the way they can cycle through everything i know you can't put a module in here but i'm not getting any any real issues or anything like that it's not like i go to hardcore races where uh, you need to get that different multi-pathing and cancelling out signals and all that sort of stuff but i think for most pilots uh they would be more than happy to fly this thing around but with all yeah i really do get bad break up in this one spot behind behind all those trees which is understandable but the one thing that i think i would say to anybody who's going to get one of these is i believe they're more expensive than the o3 x no the o2x and the o2c's which for me they're my goggle of choice because they're 16 by 9 so i think a lot of people if you want a budget option well, uh, I'd probably be getting those. And if you wanted to really get these ones, you might be worth spending the extra money in getting the OLED version. So they're kind of in a tricky place where they're competing against themselves. They've got models that are better than this, and uh, they've got models that are better value from the, than this, and it's just stuck in this weird place in the middle. But for some people, I'm sure they're gonna want the four by three in the big field of view, but they don't wanna pay that extra cash for the OLED, and this would be for them. But everything else is just kind of your standard sky zone that works well and great functionality great colors and yeah so overall i think a good goggle just in a, a tricky place in the market but what we should do let's bring it in hand it over to the other boys see what they think just as i get in low battery 
So uh, this should be perfect. Straight into Trevor. <laughs> did it? Where did it go? Straight in front of you? Did it give you a shock? Radio GT, good to see you back in front of the camera. Today we're looking at the O3 S's. So what do you think about Sky Zones in the past? I know you've been playing around a bit with the O3 O's. I think you might have a video coming up on them somewhere if it is. Do you, can I say that? Yeah, yeah, I have. And uh, but is it out yet? Not yet. Okay, no, so that, I'll put that coming. on this in this up here somewhere in the description if it's out by the time this video comes out. But yep, thoughts on I guess Sky Zone in general. Well, they've come a long way, and they listen to people. When you tell them there's something wrong, they fix it, which has impressed me to no end. Anyway, I like the feel of these things already because they're exactly the same as the blue ones, except the lenses, of course. Uh, what do you call it? The, the LEDs. The LEDs. Yep, so yep. We'll give these a go and see what they reckon. But these are a bit cheaper. Ooh, just big screen, isn't it? Not as nice as the OLED. It's just as comfortable, which is arm um, here, isn't it? Yep, yep. Uh, I like Sky Zones since that last one, the early one, came out. But I tell you what, they're very comfortable. Any light leakage? No, none at all. Yep. You know, that's big bonus. But the other ones, the A3Os, didn't have any light leakage either. And, oh, look, you could do a lot worse than these. Uh, the camera what we've got on this thing is not the best, but the picture is very vibrant. Oh, I forgot to start your DVR. I should be able to do that by pressing this button. Is it recording? Yeah. The uh, camera in this thing is nothing no, fantastic, no. but it's still very vibrant colours. Uh, yeah, look, it's, the picture's vibrant. Uh, even though we've got a crappy camera in this, I'm surprised at how good the colours are. No, I can't find them, Stu. The, uh, the goggles are very comfortable, more comfortable than the old mice. Do you like the screen as much uh, as the OLED ones? No. Okay. I think that's about an eighty dollar price difference. Yeah. So would you pay an extra eighty bucks on top of that? Yes. They're about the three twenty. Most definitely, I'd, I'd pay the eighty dollars. Okay. I, I like the uh, the OLED versions for uh, are way better than these, but these are they're still good. I mean, if you haven't got the bucks to do it, you can't go wrong. I reckon they've really come a long way, and uh, I can certainly recommend these to anyone. What do you think about it, value for money? Well, I reckon they're about an eight for value for money. Comfort-wise, these things are a 10. They're just very, very comfortable. Or well, on my head anyway, but uh, there was no light leakage. Really do like these. What about the fact you can't put a module in there? Oh, look, that doesn't worry me. I reckon modules, most of the modules are a wank. If you're racing, you might need one, but general flying, you don't need it. It's just all bloody hype and bull****. And you're still happy with uh, your old on Yeah, on Like, look at these things. Yeah. These battle, battle tanks. I've got to say, you probably heard me in the video, these are way more comfortable than my almost. Um... The only thing I don't like about these is the SD card underneath, uh, but it hasn't fallen out yet, I guess. But uh, I reckon they're great. Would you get these or the C's? Would you spend a uh, hundred dollars less and get the C's, or would, out of the three models, what would you get? I really like the OLEDs. Okay. Yeah. All right. He's a fancy man. Because they're really so clear and the screen's so vivid and uh, yeah, it's pretty hard. Nice. Thanks, Trev. Radio LRT, you're about to go for a rip on your old school Moby Louise and your drones today. We forgot the batteries, everything we've kind of left at home. But uh, you've tried the O3Os, remember the Sky Zone yep. OLEDs, the yep. blue ones, and you said, yep. were you teasing me about the colour or was that... I didn't like the colour, I think it was very girly, okay. but that's me. Okay, so uh, that wasn't your favourite. I think I still got them here, that's that yep. was these ones. Yeah, that's those. They, yeah, they were them? a little bit girly, but yeah. I mean, you can buy them in different colours, yep. so if you're a boy, Get red one. Or anyway, yeah. that aside, I want you to rip around now. Okay, find I'll try these. these. Ones. All right, so I've just been uh, flying with my um, Dominator V threes. So I'll throw these on and see what the difference is. Yep, and also um, I want you to compare to the uh, the O three O's okay. flying as well. So what I can tell you about this is four by three is the big standout for me. I'm used to flying sixteen nine, so that's uh, that's a, a difference. But the screen is very very clear. Um, yeah, and. No, no light. Very comfortable on my face as well, Stu. What's that yep. beeping noise? That's the drone. Oh. It wants to fly. Yeah, these are, these feel very good. So let's give this a go. Um, yeah, great, great colours. Um, I like, I like it. Super comfortable and, ab and absolutely no light leakage in the sides. Uh, nice big screen, nice and clear. Would you take these over your Dominators? 
Uh, the colors are really good. What sort of lenses, or like screens have they got? These are their bigger screens. I think they're 40 degrees field of view, but yep. they're not the OLED screens. They're not the OLED, hence the price reduction, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know a lot of you guys have been flying with your sky zones. No light leakage at all, mate? No, nah, nothing at all. <laughs> nothing at all. Why is that, Trev? Oh, just, no. just going to wax it up for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Grease up. No, no, this is, uh, this is really nice. I often have some trouble getting them to fit my face. It must be quite narrow, but these certainly fit very, very nice. I, it's definitely not as sharp as some of the... Uh, some of the OLED screens that I've flown with, but they're a very, very flyable pair of goggles. Like, Would you buy them? Yeah, I would, absolutely. Would, they're, they're, would you, if you had to get a new pair of goggles tomorrow, would this be the pair you'd get? Um, so much choice. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of like... You, would you spend the more money to get the, the uh, OLEDs? I'm a great believer of buy what you really want. Okay. So I think I'd probably buy a set of OLEDs just to have the luxury of a, of a decent so that's screen. That's what Trevor said as well. Yeah. I don't know, if you're going to spend this sort of money, it's, it's what, another 150 for OLEDs? Uh, I think it's only about 80 bucks. Oh, okay, so that's Auss American, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so 100, 120, 130 Aussie. For me, I'd rather spend the extra and have a, a clearer pair of screens, uh, sharper definition. But, you know, it's horses for courses. These are a great pair of screens or a great set of goggles for someone who needs a decent set. If you're replacing the... Uh, the crap ones that you get with that other goggle drone that we reviewed earlier um you know any sort of goggles are an upgrade so it's all relative to what you've got to start with i suppose all right about the uh does it bother you that, that you can't put a new module in here as long as you get good reception i think it's fine and around here i'm having some uh i'm having no issues whatsoever oh all right except, no, thanks tony i can hear you got low right. battery yeah coming in all right. I like those they're good I've had, I'd have no issues uh, recommending these to anyone. Radio, so there it is. There's my review of the, uh, or I guess, comparison of the Skyzone goggles and specifically speaking about the O3Ss. And I'm going to say I like everything that this goggle is doing. I don't think it's a bad goggle by any means. I would be more than happy if someone said, Stuart, this is all you got to fly around. The only tricky part is there's two options, I feel, that Skyzone, it's almost like they're competing against themselves. They've got a fantastic, I guess, the 16x9 version, which is my goggle of choice, even though it's the cheapest of the three and you can get it even cheaper if you get the O2Cs but this goggle right here is amazing it's 16 by 9 I love everything that does you've got all the same functionality but if you want to step it up to a 4 by 3 screen well you're going to be paying a little bit more but then I don't see why if you really want to do that why don't you just get the best screens in the biz and get the OLEDs especially sometimes when you look at the price these can be the same price as this depending on which vendor you get it from look if you can get this the O3S's for around the $300 mark and that's probably a good choice or the 350 but uh, if you just had to spend a little bit more I can definitely see most people probably stepping up and getting the OLEDs if they want to have the big beautiful 4x3 screens with a really really high res which might come into uh, I guess its own as digital FPV and some of those parts come in with the HDMI in or if you're just flying around and you're happy with the 16 by 9 I would be getting this one so it's really between those two this one comes in the middle but it's kind of the jack of all trades yes it's got a big picture but uh, it's not value wise and it's not the best picture wise so it's kind of up against it it's its own worst enemy when it comes to uh, versing the other two but I'd love to know or what do you guys think drop your comments down below if you had to get a first pair of goggles what one would you get or if you had to get a pair of sky zones what one would you get and why would you go value would you go the O, would you go, I guess, performance, or would you kind of go in the middle of this 4x3 O3S, which is in a bit of a tricky place, thanks to these other two awesome goggles. But anyway, comment down below, subscribe for more FPV-related content, and as always, happy flying.